Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a while since I've done a miniature painting video, but I'm very excited for this series. I'm going to be doing four videos because I have four players in my Dungeons & Dragons campaign, and we're meeting up to do our first ever in-person face-to-face session. Uh, so I want to do something a little bit special, so I've gotten them each their own set of die, and to go along with it, I thought I would paint some miniatures of their characters. I just got back from my local game shop where I found some Nolzer's Marvelous Minis, and these are great. Six bucks, they come with two miniatures each, which is really great because... That way I can give each of my players a miniature to have with them. And because we play predominantly over Discord with a video chat, I can also have a miniature of their players so that if I have to simulate encounters using dungeon tiles and other miniatures for um, monsters and NPCs, then I can have a miniature of them to represent where they are on the map and I can stream that over the video chat so everybody can kind of see what's going on and make it a little bit easier. The other reason I really like this is they come pre-primed in the package so we can skip that step and get right to painting and first up is our elven cleric Yeldrin Ezraneth who was orphaned from conflict as a young child and kind of grew up with his adoptive parents following along in a mercenary company where he kind of learned a bit of ace magic from them and some martial fighting skills and eventually worked his way up to be a general in an army where he helped with fighting lots of battles with this mercenary company until one day they were overtaken and he found himself impaled to a tree from a lance uh, and he watched all his company men get slaughtered. And he sat there for eight days when a uh, corpse reanimated in front of him and his booming voice claiming to be Tyr, the god of war and justice, spoke to him saying, Yeldrin, I have chosen you to be my new champion to fight against the pervasions of war, you know, greed, tyranny, and injustice. And Yeldrin felt the power of that and healed himself and carried on. And he decided to follow along that mission and do the work of Tyr, and that's how he kind of met our adventuring party. His weapon of choice is the Glaive, which is a European-style polearm. Uh, the miniature did not come with that. This is as close as I could do, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, we do have one of them with a staff casting magic, which is pretty close, and the other one has a mace and a shield, and you never know, he might decide to change up his fighting style anyways, but enough of that, let's get painting. So I asked my players to send me a brief physical description of their characters, though they don't know why yet. And to start off with Yeldrin, I've been told that he has pale gray skin, so I've just mixed a little bit of gray primer and some white. Uh, it's not too different from the prime that's already on here, but I think it'll give it a little bit more substance. And we're just gonna paint all of his skin on both the same, and then we'll do, we'll move on from there. Yeldrin also has gray and black hair. So we're gonna do a little bit of abysmal black. And we're just gonna dab a little bit of white in with it and see if we can get that nice graying look for his hair. I might just do a undercoat of gray like this and then dry brush on some black after. I think that might look kind of cool. So for the rest of the description I got, it was a lot about the equipment, like he has steel uh, chainmail and plate armor, which I obviously don't have on the miniature. Uh, this is, I tried a little bit of Duragar metal. Uh, it's not really the color I think I'm gonna go for. So I guess to start with his armor, we're gonna uh, get some of that mithril silver on, all the metal parts, and kind of work our way off from there. I know this isn't supposed to be metal, but I think we can pretend it to be chain mail for now. So I'm pretty much just gonna run with the color scheme he gave me, which is blue, purple cloak and robes and kind of steel plate armor. For the clothing colors, I've mixed a little bit of Kraken blue and a little bit of Fair's Ress purple. Add a little bit of Succubus red in there. So I did our, the mixture of purple and blue for the cape and I went a tiny bit bluer for the undergarments. It shows up a lot better on this one. Uh, yes, I did spill over quite a bit and yes, I will have to do a second coat and finish the back of the cape. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you the color scheme. I'll tidy it up a bit and finish it off. I know I was all fired up at the beginning about the <laughs> pre-prime, but I, it doesn't seem to go on. This is already two coats of paint on there and you can still see through it, so. Okay, now that we have the base coats down for the color scheme, and yes, there are touch-ups we have to do. We can go back to our regularly scheduled programming and run some Bugbear Brown in for like the weapon handles. And uh, maybe the belt. And I'll do the staff. 
And some rigid leather. For the gloves and the boots. Here's where we are so far. There's a little bit of touching up to do, but overall I think it's turning out reasonably well. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is paint the magic spell and uh, the eyes, which are green, I believe from his description. And I'm gonna do the spell in green. Originally I was gonna do guided strike or guiding bolt, uh, whichever one of those, cause he uses that spell fairly often, but the way that this spell is shaped, I just couldn't, I just couldn't do it. It doesn't look at all like a bolt. So instead I'm going to paint it also green like the eyes, like the eyes to simulate what I would believe to be a like healing spell because life for some reason pops into my head as green right now. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go with treant green for the eyes and the spell. This is the first time I've ever painting any of this translucent stuff, so hopefully that goes all right. And we're gonna fix up, fix up the shield and the cape needs a bit of touch up. Redo the hair and then we got this little pouch. Ugh. This little pouch on the side, I think on both of them, yeah. Then I'm gonna paint yellow, kind of like a, make it look brown. And then we're just gonna do the base and the wash. And the hair. For the train, I think I'm gonna try a mixture of bugbear brown and Angelic yellow. I know it's pretty much my go to mixture, but I think I might mix that up and then add some green over top. Hopefully, it looks all right on this rocky terrain here. I just think it's a pretty good standard color. I don't really like the gray. I mean, for dungeon tiles and stuff, it makes sense, but I like to avoid the primer color as much as I can because it just makes me feel like it looks like unfinished or unpainted. Now the fun part, huh, the whole thing's the fun part, but a little bit of super glue. the base. Push it around a bit, make it nice and coated. Yeah, I'm gonna try something a bit different. I'm gonna make a bit of a thicker a wash to try to fill a lot of those cracks in that I couldn't get painted and uh, see how that looks. I'm not sure how thick this wash is. I made it so long ago. He is in his final form, Yeldrin Ezranith, Elf Cleric, of Balfire's Companions. And the set of die to match. Painting these guys was an absolute blast. It's really cool to have uh, two versions of the same character to paint at the same time so you can mess around with color schemes and uh, have a kind of variation on that. I thought that was really cool. 
Um, if you liked what you saw or found that helpful at all, or if you have any tips or tricks of your own, please leave me a comment and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. We have lots of other cool videos, lots of other fun stuff you can do at home. And don't forget, there's still three more characters from Bellfire's Companions that I got to paint. So stay tuned and I'll see you again next time.